Hey YouTube, how you doing? Today I'm going to be bringing you a review on the SteelSeries Arctis Pro with Game Deck. As usual, we're going to start off by talking about the build construction and materials used, and then we're going to go over the specifications of the headset, and then I'm going to throw them on so you can see what they look like on the head, and we're going to do a mic test, and I'll try to describe how good the sound quality is to you guys. So starting off with the build construction and materials, we'll start from the top and work our way down to the bottom of the headset. Up here is a cloth strap, and this cloth strap is actually going to be how you size the headset to your head. Unfortunately, there's no way to extend these ear cups out at all, so the only way to size this headset is by undoing this Velcro strap here, and then either pulling it to make it tighter, or pulling it this way, cinching it down, and now it can fit larger head sizes. So that's going to be the only way to size the headset. Then if I move this cloth out of the way, you can see this metal band up here, which is really good. That's going to add some durability to the headset, and it's also going to allow it to flex to not only provide that clamping force on the side of your head, but also make it more comfortable and secure while you're wearing it. Underneath that metal band is going to be a rubber piece that they've adhered onto the bottom side of it. And that, along with the cloth on the bottom side, is going to be what protects your head from that metal band and makes everything a little bit more comfortable. On the sides of the headset here, you'll see when I have them turned on, it's hard to see right now, but there is an LED strip that runs all the way around the outside of the ear cup. And that's going to light up when you have them turned on. It looks really cool. And there's the Steel Series branding right there. And these speaker plates are removable and magnetic. So you can order new ones, different colors and stuff like that, and replace those as necessary. On the inside of the ear cup, you can see a plastic piece inside of here that protects the actual neodymium speakers. And there's a cloth material over the plastic to kind of protect your ears from rubbing against that plastic in there. The ear cups are made of a full cloth. That feels really good. It also breathes really well. Even when I push down on the ear cup here, I can feel that air escaping out the sides of the ear cup. So that's really good for breathability. Hopefully you keep your ears pretty cool while you're wearing the headset for extended periods of time. On the left ear cup here on the back, you've got a mic mute button and a volume scroll wheel. And then on the bottom of the headset here, this is a mini USB port that's going to be what connects to the game DAC. Or if you got the version without the game DAC, this is going to go straight to your PC or console. And then this is just an auxiliary port, so you can actually plug in an outside source and listen to different music and stuff, which is a little redundant, especially if you have the game DAC, but, you know, it's a nice feature to have. And then out of the left side of the ear cup here, this is actually the microphone. You just pull it out and that's going to give you access to your microphone and then when you're done with it you can just slide it right back into the ear cup and that's going to keep it from getting damaged and it's also going to you know allow for a little bit more of a compact storage as well now i'll show you guys the game deck real quick we're going to go a little bit more in depth where i'm going to show you through all the settings and stuff but just so you know this is the game deck right here this is going to be your volume wheel and it's also going to be how you adjust a lot of the settings. And then on the left hand side of the game deck here, this is where your headset plugs in. The other side of that mini USB is going to go right in here to the left side. On the back of the game deck, you have an optical port. That's going to be where you plug in your optical port from your Xbox or console or whatever. This USB port right here goes to your computer or PC, whichever one you are listening on. And then you've got a mobile port and your line out port is basically going to be your stream port. That's where you're going to go from your line out to either your mic or line in port to your PC for streaming. All right, guys, now I'm going to be showing you specifically the game deck and kind of how to use it and the feature set within it. But first, let me talk about the specs of what we have here. Um, so the headset itself has 40 millimeter neodymium drivers and a headphone frequency response of 10 hertz to 40 kilohertz, which is really, really good. 
that's probably the broadest range of frequency response that I've seen on a dedicated headset. That's pretty far outside of the range that scientists say the human ear can even hear, but it's not bad to have a broader range. You know, a lot of argument can be made that the broader the range, the more clear that the audio is going to be. The headphone impedance is 32 ohms, which is going to be perfectly fine, especially with the game DAC. No separate amp or anything to drive these headphones. And then the game deck itself has a frequency response of 5 hertz to 40,000 hertz or, you know, 40 kilohertz. So it's going to cover that whole range plus actually an additional 5 hertz on the low end. And the audio format is available up to 96 kilohertz and 24 bits, which again is very high for a gaming headset. So this game deck, at least on paper, is very, very capable. This is pretty much the star of the show right here. The headset is good, but this is going to be what drives them and gives them that full feature set. So it comes with two buttons on the top and a dial. The first button is going to be the small one right here. The second button is going to be actually pushing in this dial. And then the dial itself is going to allow you to adjust the volume as well as go between all the menu settings. So it's a little confusing when you first start to use this, learning how to do everything and go through the menus, but once you have it all figured out, it's really not that bad. Um, basically, on your main home screen here, you're going to have a volume bar and a mix bar. And to switch between those two, you're just going to tap your dial real quick. So when it's on the left side, you're going to be able to control your main volume. And when it's on the right side, you're going to be able to control the mix of volume between the game and the chat. Up on the top here, it's going to tell you on the left-hand side, you can see it says PC right now, but this is going to tell you if, if you're in PC or console mode or high-res mode. And then this second bar right here is going to tell you what audio format you're currently in. Right now, it's at 48 kilohertz at 16-bit. And on the right-hand side here, this is going to be your DTS on and off. And you're just going to hit this button, this small button right here, to turn DTS on or off. I'm going to leave it off for the moment. To enter the main menu section, you're going to hold down the volume switch right here. And that's going to bring you into the main menu. And then you're just going to use this to go through the menu options, turning left or right on the dial switch. So we're going to start off with audio. When you first go in here, you can see you have DTS on, or you can turn it off, just like you did with the smaller button on the main screen. And the small button is going to take you back whenever you're in a menu. So we're going to hit that small button, and here you see equalizer. These are going to be your equalizer settings. It's on bass boost right now, but you can toggle between flat and, you know, custom, smiley, all these different presets they have, or you can, you know, go through here and kind of do your own preset. You can set your gain on high or low. It's going to be on low by default, and due to certain regulations, especially in Europe, you're going to have to override this in the settings to be able to go to high, but high is going to open up that louder volume for a lot of people. Side tone, this is basically going to be what other people consider kind of mic monitoring, so to speak. I've got it set to off right now because I've found that even on the lowest settings, um, it's a little loud for me, so I leave it on low, but you can go between medium and high, and I usually either go low or off. Mic volume, this is going to be the actual volume of your mic to other people or your stream. And I leave this at 8. It's plenty loud enough as is, but you can adjust this if needed. Next is going to be input. This is where you go from PC to high res to console. Output, you're going to go to line out mode. You can either output it to speakers or you can output it to streaming, which is what I'm going to leave it on. Display, you can adjust your display brightness, turning that up or down. And the idle timeout, which is just going to shut off the screen if you don't touch it after a certain amount of time, you can change that as well. Illumination, this is going to allow you to adjust the color for your mic when it's muted, or just the ear cups in general. And then about is just going to show your current firmware in any info, and then we can go all the way out to the main screen. 
One thing I want to show you real quick, and I'll get back into this when we go over to the PC side, but for input, you're not going to have access. Remember earlier I told you you have access to a high res mode um, that can go all the way up to 96 kilohertz and 24 bit. You're not going to have access to that unless you go into your input and go to high res mode, and it's only available on PC. But even when you go to high res mode, I've already got it turned on on my PC, but this might be grayed out for you. And I'm going to show you how in your settings to make sure that this comes up as actual high res audio, because if you're playing on PC, this is where the best audio is going to come from. And again, this is unavailable on console. So you're going to be pretty much locked at 16 bit audio. All right, guys, now we're going to move into the next part of the review. First, I'm going to show you how to get that high res audio option out of the DAC. And then we're going to talk about the headset quality and the mic quality and kind of some of the quirks and features of the headset. I also want to say right now I'm using the mic on the Arctis Pro and for the rest of the review everything you hear is going to be through this mic. That way you can be aware of how the mic works and how it sounds and everything like that. So to get that high res audio option out of your headset you're going to come down here to your volume panel and you're going to open your sound settings. Then you're going to come up to sound control panel. Once you're here, you're going to find your headset, which mine is right here, the Game DAC High Res. You're going to right click and go to properties and go to advanced. And once you're here, you're going to be able to select whatever you need. I think by default, it's on 16 bit 48,000 Hertz, which is also similar quality to what you're going to get out of your console as well. But since the DAC allows you to go above that, you're going to go to the two channel 24 bit 96 hertz studio quality and hit OK. And once you do that, that little grayed out high res audio option on your game DAC is going to be lit up, letting you know that you now have high res audio coming from your headset. Also make sure that it's on, you know, you have those three input settings, PC, high res, or console, make sure it's on high res. And this is going to be for PC only. Remember, this is unavailable on consoles. Now, one thing to remember if you're not getting the volume level that you're looking for is remember that they sell this headset without the game DAC. The game DAC has a volume knob on it, but because they sell it without the game DAC, remember there's a volume knob on the back of the left ear cup. Make sure that's all the way up. Real quick, I'm also going to show you the LEDs on the ear cups. They look pretty good. And also, when you use the mute button for your mic, you'll notice that you can see it light up red on the microphone to let you know that you're muted. So that's a good feature as well. It looks pretty good. It's also very comfortable. Um, the ear cups are very well padded. My ears don't touch the inside of the speaker plates. It's a very light headset. It's one of the lighter headsets I've worn in a while. I'm not sure how I feel about the microphone kind of going into the headset and then coming back out because it's really hard to find the perfect position for the headset. After you first pull it out, it's kind of just sitting there and the wire that is used here is not very pliable so it's hard to get the perfect position but you know you can kind of manipulate it around a little bit and find kind of where you want the headset to go as you can hear the mic quality is pretty good I would say it's well above average for a microphone that's attached to a headset if you're not looking for a dedicated mic or anything like that this is going to serve you pretty well for both gaming and streaming without using the high-res audio on the PC the headset still sounds very good. Um, I would say it doesn't get quite as loud as I would like, but the sound quality is still there. When you activate that high res audio on the PC, it can get pretty loud, plenty loud enough for me. Um, I usually don't even turn it all the way up. Usually about 90, 95% is where I leave it when I'm in the middle of a game. The headset is very well rounded, so it sounds good not only for gaming, but watching YouTube, Netflix, listening to music, whatever especially with that high-res audio option. If you listen to anything with high-res audio, 
especially soundtracks from a more lossless audio source like Tidal, is going to sound really good. And on the PS4, it sounds very good, but not excellent. I do think there are other options that you could choose um, at this price point or even below that is going to give you similar audio quality. What I would recommend this headset for is PC gaming. Um, the specs alone for the game DAC are far better than I've seen on any other mix amp on the market um, under like 2 250. The frequency response range is huge for not only the headset but the game DAC as well. And everything sounds really, really good on PC, and the mic quality is good. If you're using this headset for PC gaming, I would definitely recommend, even at $250, um, I would recommend picking this up. It's a really good headset. It's very comfortable. The mic works well. Quality's really good. And the high-res audio sounds really, really good, not just for gaming, but for any other audio source or content you're consuming as well. The game deck by itself is probably the best piece of this whole setup. The headset's good. The game deck is very good, and even though most other gaming headsets can't take advantage of that wider frequency response like this headset can, um, you could actually use their game DAC to drive just about every other gaming headset out there, and it has a stream port just like you know the Turtle Beaches and the Mixant Pro from Astro. So if you're looking for a new premium gaming headset somewhere between 150 and 250 for the PS4 or the PC, I would definitely consider purchasing these. Um, especially for the PC, it's going to be a great headset for you. It's very comfortable. The mic quality is great. The game DAC has a stream port. The game DAC in and of itself is a great piece of equipment, especially with that high-res audio option. It's easy to use, and everything feels really comfortable and durable. I hope you guys found this video useful. If you have any comments or questions, drop them in the comment section down below. And if you'd like to see other content like this, make sure you subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications. And YouTube, we'll see you later.